Large batteries like this 300 amp hour bioeno lithium iron phosphate can take a long time to charge. So this company called Ardroit emailed me saying they have a 50 amp lithium iron phosphate charger and asked if I'd be interested in reviewing it. So naturally I said yes. So here's this review. Let's check it out. So here's what we get. We've got the charger, a little manual, power cord for the charger, some accessories here. The, the charging cable is terminated with an Anderson style uh, 50 amp plug, which is great. And they've also got these uh, pull tabs on here so you can separate them easy. That's a nice touch. Then we have a little pigtail with the 50 amp Anderson style. These aren't actual Andersons. These are from Grid Power. I've used these before. They mate perfectly with actual Anderson uh, connectors, so no problem there. And then we also get another pigtail with the 50 amp Anderson and some really nice beefy alligator clips. These are, <laughs> these are really nice. Now the wire doesn't actually state what gauge it is. I'm guessing this is eight gauge wire uh, and it is actual copper wire that you can see inside there. So it's not like tinned aluminum or anything like that or, or tinned copper. It's, it's the real McCoy, so that is good. And then we've got uh, 60 amp connectors on here. So everything's looking good so far. The power cable itself is wrapped in a nice insulation. Very, very heavy duty. Let's see if this says anything. Okay, it says six gauge wire there. So, okay, so we got six gauge wire in, the, in here. Good. Taking a look at the charger itself, we can see the AC input is rated for 100 to 120 volts at 60 hertz with an 8 amp max or 200 to 240 uh, with a switch. Battery type is uh, ternary lithium, which is a lithium nickel cobalt manganate chemistry. I've not heard of that. Uh, and also lithium iron phosphate. So this is very chemistry uh, dependent. So you only want to use this for those types of batteries. We'll be using lithium iron phosphate in this video. And we'll note that it also charges up to 14.6 volts, which is perfect. A lot of other chargers in the lithium iron phosphate world uh, only charge to 14.4, but full charge is actually 14.6. So we'll check that in a bit. That is a good feature there. Taking a look at the side, you can see we've got a big fan. We've got our power plug input, an on off switch. And here's our switch to go from 220 volts to 110 volts. Do make sure you're on the right voltage before you start using this. We've also got some tabs on either side for mounting this, though it didn't come with any hardware, a few screws, you can mount this. And the whole body is all metal with heat sinks. So hopefully this should stay fairly cool. Taking a look at the other side of the charger, we've got this indicator light here. Uh, which if it's just on should be green. And if the battery capacity is 20 to 80%, the red light will flash. When the capacity is 80 to 100%, the green light will flash. And when it's fully charged, the green light will stay on uh, continuously. Taking a look at the manual, there's a few things I wanna point out. Number one, a charger like this is really rated for larger capacity batteries, like two or 300, even 400 amp hour batteries. Or if you have, say, three or four hundred amp hour batteries in parallel, this would be good. You, you probably don't want to use this for a smaller, you know, 20, 30, 50 amp hour battery. Uh, they also mention uh, this has the ability to reset your BMS. If your BMS trips and doesn't reset itself, this should be able to kickstart the BMS and start charging. I don't have any batteries where the BMS doesn't just automatically turn on. So unfortunately we won't, we won't be able to test that feature with this charger, but they do advertise it as being able to do that. The rest of the instructions actually just say the same thing one, two, and three times. But one thing I want to point out, which confuses me, they mentioned this twice, this temperature compensation, they say this charger has intelligent temperature compensation. Ensure the charger stops charging if the battery gets too hot. It also adjusts the charging voltage based on the environmental temperature for the best charging effect. Place the temperature sensor close to the battery, ideally between two batteries. 
And then they also mention over here under protective properties, battery over temperature protection. Well, I don't see any battery over temperature protection. There's no way to plug in a temperature sensor here. It did not come with a temperature sensor. And there is also no temperature sensor lead inside the wires. So I'm curious as to how they're saying this has battery over temperature protection. So I'm gonna call shenanigans on that. But other than that, let's go ahead and start charging and see what this does. So before we start this test, let's take a look at the battery. I'm at uh, about 13.33 volts. This was a full battery. I discharged, I think about 80 amp hours from this battery. So we should be able to put a good long charge on here and make sure the uh, charger doesn't overheat or anything. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna use these alligator clips here and make sure it's off. I'll go ahead and plug in the Anderson connector and let's turn it on. And there she goes. Some reviews on Amazon talked about the loudness of this fan. It honestly doesn't sound that loud to me. I mean, you definitely know it's, it's on and in the room, but it's not overly loud. We are charging. The red light is blinking red. And let's see what we get for current here. Let me zero out my meter. And there you can see 49.9 amps. So I'm gonna say we're getting 50 amps with my Chinese uh, clamp meter here. So it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. Let's take a look at the voltage on the terminals. 13.78 there. So seems to be doing exactly what it should. So I'm gonna let this go and fully charge up and we'll check for any kind of heat buildup and we'll test the voltage of the charged battery. They state 14.6, so hopefully we'll see that. Now for you amateur radio operators, you're gonna to wanna to know, is this RF quiet? No, not even close. Let me show you. So here we are on 160 meters. If I plug this in, we can see that noise uh, coming up on the waterfall there. And as I turn the charger on, you can see it gets pretty darn nasty. And we'll just go through the bands here. There's 80 meters, a lot of noise there. 40 meters, not terrible, but you can see we've definitely got some noise. 30 meters, same thing. 20 meters is pretty bad. 17 meters is absolutely atrocious. 15, 12 meters doesn't seem to have any interference. Eh, a little bit there. And 10 meters is pretty noisy. Uh, and six meters is pretty clean there. So all kinds of RFI is emanated from this charger. That honestly doesn't bother me. I have other chargers from well-known brands that do create a lot of RFI. Uh, and the number of times that I'm charging while operating the radio is pretty minimal. So take that for what it's worth, but it is not RF quiet at all. So the charger's been going for about 10 minutes or so, and it is getting really hot, especially on top here, like almost too hot to touch. The wires are warming up considerably as are the alligator clamps. Still putting 48 and a half amps in, but let's check the temperature here. 130, 134 degrees. Seems to be the hottest over here, but that's pretty darn hot. The fan is doing everything it can. 135.1, so I don't know. This wire might be not actually six gauge or it needs to be higher gauge, a bigger gauge, because it's there's definitely a lot of heat coming from this thing. But we'll, uh, I'm gonna let this charge, I'm gonna cut this wire open and see what's inside. And uh, we'll take a look at all that once this is done charging. All right, so we're getting close to the end here. The green light is flashing. 
We're at 14.42 volts here, so we'll see if we get up to the 14.6, which kind of looking like we are, because we're already over 14.4. Where are we at now? Only 4.5 amps and lowering, so we're, we're pretty close to the end here of charge. Oh, and there it goes. Green lights on, we're done charging. Let's see where we're at. 14.57, close enough. So we got the 14.6 volts out of it. That is a good thing. Now I wanna take a look at this wire. So I cut the ends off of this one pigtail and we can see this is definitely copper wire. It's not tinned or anything, so that's good. Uh, I was concerned about the gauge, if this actually was six gauge wire, cause it's, it got pretty warm. Even on the uh, alligator clip, I saw about 121 degrees on the alligator clip there. So it was warm enough. Turns out uh, six gauge wire, kind of depending on, depending on the type of wire it is, is rated for anywhere from 55 to 65 amps. So we're, I'm gonna go on the lower side of that and say 55 amps. So we're kind of on the cusp of what six gauge wire is rated for in terms of amperage. In terms of size six gauge wire without the jacket, should be 4.1154 millimeters. So I cut this, I twisted this side, and depending on where I measure it, you can kind of see 3.8, 3.7, somewhere in there. When it's not twisted, we're kind of closer to that measurement. So um, I'm gonna say this is actual six gauge wire and you know, good copper wire as well, but I, I kind of think it would be nicer to see a little bit heavier gauge uh, just so we have less heat buildup in the wire itself. And speaking of heat, that was kind of the one big thing that I noticed about this charger. So I was careful to keep a good watch on this. I pretty much checked on this every 10 minutes or so, took a temperature reading. And uh, in the last clip when this was uh, just finishing charging, I had my hand on it because it did start to cool down as it was uh, putting less current into the battery towards the end. But I measured uh, like 141 degrees was about the highest I saw on this with my thermometer. That's just insanely hot. I mean, almost to the point where it'd burn you. Think a black car with black interior on a hundred and some odd degree day and just touch your dashboard and it burns you, it was kind of that hot. So I don't know if they're supposed to get that hot. That seems a little strange. Um, even though the fan was on the whole time and in full blast, uh, it was, I put my decibel meter up to it. I think it was 71, 72 dB uh, of, of sound coming out of this thing right next to it. But uh, the temperature was a big concern of mine. I even put this silicone mat underneath it. This is what I use for soldering because it's a really high heat resistant mat. I just didn't know if we were gonna have some kind of thermal runaway, but uh, it charged, it did what it's supposed to. So technically it passes that. Uh, I'd be curious what you guys think of this in the comments. I, I, I don't really have anything to base this off of. This is my first uh, 50 amp charger that I've used, but I know I would definitely like to see a little bit bigger gauge wire in there. Um, it just, you know, everything just got warm and hot on the charger itself, but the wires themselves still got warm. So, I mean, it seems solidly built in terms of the connections and the crimps and the Anderson and everything. Um, there's just a lot of heat coming out of it. But again, we did get 14.6 volts. So that is our review of the Ardroit 50 amp charger. I'll leave uh, an affiliate link to Amazon in the description if you wanna grab one of these and uh, anybody that has more experience with, with uh, 50 amp chargers, are they supposed to get this hot? That's all I got, guys. My name is Mike K and I'm Thanks for watching Ham Radio Tube 73.